Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn checklist overview before installing SQL Server in cluster mode. And I have written some of the high level points right here, and we're going to go ahead and talk each point in a little bit detail. First point up here is cluster is configured properly. When I say cluster is configured properly, that means the cluster is installed and you have made sure that uh, it failed over between nodes and uh, um, and cluster configuration shows no critical errors. Number two, nodes are added and online. Uh, in my case, I had a two nodes cluster. So if in your case, it's two node cluster or three node cluster, all those nodes needs to be added and online in cluster. So number three, cluster configuration report shows no critical warning. Uh, right here, critical warning for production system is not good. You need to make sure that you can go ahead in cluster configuration, basically, which I'll show you in a second. And look at that this report, configuration report, anytime you want to. It'll show you the latest, greatest uh, configuration that you have run if you haven't run the configuration you should go ahead and run the cluster configuration and look at the report to see if there are any critical warnings and if there are they need to be taken care of before you can start go before you can start SQL Server installation in production number four up here static IP um, in my case I have installed two SQL Server instance. Each SQL Server instance that you are planning to install in cluster mode needs to have its own static IP. So thumb rule is that uh, you're going to go ahead and acquire one IP address per instance of SQL Server. Uh, number five, shared disks are added to the cluster and they're online. Keep in mind that shared disks are mandatory. It's a requirement when you install SQL Server in cluster mode. Only time that you don't need shared disk is when you are uh, basically installing uh, availability group, which is SQL Server 2012 and 2014 feature, then you don't need shared disk. But in this demo, we're in basically talking about SQL Server installation in cluster mode. Number five, the best practices I, I have put down here, this is uh, specific to SQL Server. Uh, data and logs shouldn't be on one disk, so you should always have a separate disk of data, separate disk, disk of log, and tempdb. And if you have backup devices needs to be configured, you do need to have the backup device, device uh, disk up there on the cluster. And all the disk needs to be online once again. MSDTC role, this is Microsoft uh, um, Distribution Transaction Coordinator. This role needs to be configured if you are using, if you're going to install SQL Server 2005. Uh, but uh, in 2008 R2 and above, you really don't need MSDTC configured on the cluster because if you don't do that, uh, 2008 R2 and above will use um, the local DTC services of the node that they are running on. So it's basically optional, but uh, some people like to have DTC services role configured on 2008 R2. But uh, if you do want it to do that, make sure that MS DTC services role is configured. It requires its own disk and that disk is there too and is configured properly. So next thing, I'm going to uh, walk you through my cluster configuration and uh, we'll go through each of these points that what we talked about and see if everything looks okay in there. And that way you can go ahead and take a reference in this demo that uh, when you're ready to install SQL Server, you need what things you need to look at as far as SQL Server cluster goes. So here's my uh, one node. As you can see that I have failover cluster manager right here. My cluster name is TBS 2012 cluster right here. Let's expand that. Let's expand everything right here. When you click on cluster name, you will get a uh, nice information right here that um, first of all, the name of the cluster, the current host where this cluster services are being hosted. So right now it's on node one and networks are cluster network one and two. One is for heartbeat and other is for uh, external uh, communication. That means the communication between your uh, uh, cluster nodes and, and your hosts and your uh, uh, organization network. And uh, one private, that is communication between the nodes that you have added in this cluster. And uh, recent cluster events, you can uh, right now, I have just reset the recent uh, um, events, but uh, this is very important. If something happens to your cluster, you do want to look at the recent cluster events and see that what went wrong, why the cluster fail, failed over, or even some of the warnings and information that you would like to do, you, you basically go ahead and look at the 
the cluster events. So um, what I was talking about as far as checklist goes, this cluster needs to be up and running. It needs to be one of the nodes right here. In my case, it's TBS node one. And uh, this is what I was talking about, view validation report. You do need to look at the configuration report or validation report right here. You can click on here and uh, it will take you to the latest report that you have run and you need to make sure that this report doesn't show any critical warnings there are sometimes there are small warnings that you can go ahead and basically ignore that it will just warn you that okay your firewall is on or off something like that that you know that is not going to go uh, it's not going to create any issue for you then you can ignore that but any critical warning i'll suggest that if you're preparing this cluster for your sql server production please go through that so next up here uh, I was talking about nodes uh, I'll come back to roles in a little bit I have already installed two SQL Server instances I don't want to show you right now but uh, in the end we will go through that uh, this right now we're just looking at that uh, this is prior to the installation of SQL Server so I have two nodes if you have uh, more than two nodes you will see all those nodes up and running here and um, keep in mind that uh, none of the node should be really offline unless uh, you, you intentionally did it and you don't want to use that uh, node for SQL Server installation. Disk up here, this is shared disk. Uh, each instance needs to have its own set of shared disk. So keep in mind that if you're uh, installing more than one instance, then you should have more than one shared disk set. So right here, I have a one, two, three, four for one instance and right here three for other instance so basically three for one instance as you can see sql prod sql prod right here and three for the, here this one is tech brothers msdtc role i went ahead basically i have uh, configured dtc in cluster so uh, it, just in case if you wanted to configure that um, that needs to be all those this needs to be online next important thing is our networks Keep in mind that uh, there should be two networks at least. Uh, one is um, private where it says cluster only. They should be up and running and it also known as heartbeat. You want to make sure that heartbeat is okay. Cluster and client. This is uh, external also known as external. You can click on the any resources and look at the summary and you can also look at the detail by clicking on network connection as far as uh, network goes. So any anything that you wanted to look at you can go ahead and basically uh, click on that and look at the detail below that what is uh, the uh, particular resource is there for so let's go back to roles real quick as you can see that I have installed SQL Server uh, two SQL Server instances um, right now they are both running on one node right here SQL UAT and SQL prod MS DTC role is running but uh, as, as far as this demo goes basically what I wanted to show you that a checklist that uh, you need to look at you need to look at your uh, uh, cluster configuration before you install SQL Server instance because uh, it is always a good idea otherwise uh, your installation may fail in the middle and you don't want to do that because uh, if your installation of SQL Server in cluster mode fails in between it's a whole lot work to uh, bring it back normal so that's that's uh, the checklist that I wanted to uh, basically share with you and also right here this is the checklist that I have uh, shared uh, in cluster overview and this is a bit more detail that fail failover this is preparing a node for cluster so uh, this is already uh, up on our blog and um, also it's attached so you can download this uh, uh, checklist this is a cluster checklist and it will go through each and everything that I have done and once you watch that uh, video that I have put up there you, you will see that this is particularly for SQL Server and I have mentioned right here that it needs uh, a, a separate uh, static IP each SQL Server instance that you're going to install and I hope this little demo helps.